Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Marcelo. And I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass a tool for IBT. I'm going to listen to your integrated speaking practice test. So let's hear uh, how you answered this question. Well, I think in this one it's discuss the contributions, I think, that are mentioned in the reading and the listening passage. So if you want to frame, I think, your speaking response around that, you'll say, according to the reading and the listening passage, there are three contributions that Fujita contribute to the field of meteorology. Then, then you can say, well, according to the reading passage, there are two contributions. You state what they are, then you state what the one is in the listening, and then you have a very tight uh, organization. Now, this organization that I'm telling you, uh, one of my students just got 20, um, I think he got 28 on the TOEFL following this pattern. So you want to make sure you stay real organized so we can understand where all this information is coming from. This is from. a bad concept and extra examples. First of all, Fujita introduced the concept of the tornado family, in which one, uh, each of those have a unique path. She also was able to map up entirely outbreak. So he was able to map a tornado outbreak. And then remember the word con contributions or contributed. How did this contribute to the field of meteorology? Furthermore, the listening passage states that even though there were methods uh, where multiple vertex were known based on damage, his method gave a system where damage and speed were calculated. And also, because of the, he mapped an entire path, he would be, would be able to identify a new kind of stars. Also, he was educating his students to, for that uh, concept. Yeah, but why was he educating them and why is that important? It's important is he contributed to meteorology because many of his students became prominent researchers in the field later on. So with your, with how you answered it, in terms of topic development, what you're saying is not really illustrating the idea of why his contributions are important to the field of meteorology. So I think that's, that's a weak part of the topic development area. You also were not very comfortable talking about uh, this information, so you had some delivery issues. Uh, so keep working in the pronunciation part of my course. Your score here, I'm going to put you at 2.3 out of 4, or 18 points out of 30, on this practice test. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Michelle R. And I am Michael Buckoff, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So you're completing independent speaking practice test number 137, and I'm going to listen to your practice test. So you have some people say that when a child moves to a new country, he should only be taught in the native language of his new country. Others think that it's better to teach in a bilingual method to help the children adjust. So which method do you think is better? Use details and examples to support your response. Okay. So let's hear how you answered this question. Okay, here we go. When moving to a new country, it's better to teach children in a bilingual method. First of all, children are able to learn it faster than adults, and they don't lose what they practice. For example, I... They don't lose what they practice. Practice. So you want to make sure you clearly pronounce 
both of those words. I've been living for five years in the United States, and so far I'm facing difficulties to communicate in English while my daughter has mastered both Portuguese and English because I've taught her this way. Okay. Moreover, it's important for my daughter to keep learning Portuguese in order to communicate with her grandparents. For example, last year we went back to visit my home country, and my daughter got to speak very well with her grandparents. Good example. Very, very strong. Which made me feel proud of my teaching method. Well, we'll okay, so I think that you answered this question. So, all right, from a topic development standpoint, I think that you had a clear organization along with some supporting details there. I didn't notice any language use issues. Delivery was pretty strong. Maybe you had some minor issues there. So, uh, I'm going to put you at least... Uh, on this one, uh, 24 to 26 points out of 30 on this practice test. So the delivery. Now, if you've already gone over all my lessons, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But what you can do is, um, if you go to YouTube, you can practice doing some singing. That's very good for pronunciation. You can pick a video of a song that you like and practice singing with uh, the singer. And that's also good for your intonation. Um, all right, so your score here is 24 to 26 points out of 30. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Brian, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. And in your specific case... You're doing some pronunciation practice. You're focusing on the syllabic L and syllabic R consonant sounds. So the O and ER sounds. And let's hear uh, how you have answered these questions. So I'll look at the sentences as you do your recording here. Okay, here we go. Is there anyone ever able to find it so silver in the side? You want to pronounce that one word, ample. Is there anyone able to find ample silver? So remember, adjectives and nouns, you need to stress those pretty much equally in your sentences. Yes, that's what I'm saying, the version side. A stable worker is a SIM tool servant, either the direct public or to an organization which provides a service to the public. Good. The army is settled for the capture of the city during a danger battle of April 1762. Okay. The singer had trouble performing during the concert. Because of the burning building two blocks down from the venue. Let's say the word two blocks. Two blocks down from the venue. Which main authority consider considering the show altogether. Okay. Another example where crime has gone awry, Bakerfield decided to hire more police officers so that the town would resemble the way it used to be 60 years ago, quiet and safe. Good. Now when you say this idea, another example where crime, because that's... This is a dependent clause which precedes the subject of the sentence. The tone at the end of that first thought group should be a little bit higher. I know you've been practicing this. You'll say another example where crime has gone awry and then Bakersfield decided to blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Let's hear how you uh, did the second recording here. To be destructive and dangerous, many plants such as crab, machines, and pine flatwoods. Remember, scrub, marshes, and pine flatwoods again. So, A, B, C, your intonation should be a little higher in those first two uh, ideas there because that that's precedes the third item in the thought group, at which point your tone should drop a little bit. Although fires are thought to be destructive and dangerous, Many plants such as crab, machines, and plant flatwoods depend on fire in order to survive. Okay. Fire help habitats and are important to endangered species of animals that rely on these plants for survival. Good. Fire management companies suppress fire and use... Fire management. Fire management companies... ...prescribe burning, control the fire in a confined area, so that habitats which need fire can have survival, while the general public and industry can remain stable. Okay, so overall you understand that syllabic L and the syllabic R sound, so you are pronouncing those correctly. But 
Be careful about the thought groups. Remember, every thought group, the tone needs to be a little bit higher until you get to the final thought group, and that's when your tone drops a little bit. So remember that. So I know that you've already studied that. So remember that part of my job is just continue to remind you on how to pronounce uh, certain things uh, in there. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to your next uh, recording here. So you're focusing now on the syllabic M and syllabic N consonant sounds, the um, un. All right, so let's take a look and see how you did this one. Let me put this over here. Okay, here we go. So we are ready now. Let's start with sentence number one here. Was evident. Evident. Was evident in our discussion last week. Is usted seeing as exciting reason for getting a BA in geology? Okay, so you're forgetting what you studied about thought roots and blending. So I would say the study of volcanoes. Volcanism, as was evident in our discussion last week, is often seen as an exciting reason for getting a BA in geology. Brandon, the number one student of his high school, a reading alert Columbia University, with assumption that he would be awarded a scholarship. Okay. The maximum temperature ever recorded in the United States was 134 degrees Fahrenheit during a strongly hot summer in Death Valley, California. All right. The emotionalism over the Johnston account caused each person to question the loyalty of the transition administration. The activism, skepticism... Better. You're doing better on this one, number five. You're changing your tone a little bit. I like this. A criticism of the union hope to eliminate the pressure of its workers. Okay, not bad. So I think overall you're pronouncing these two sounds correctly. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, here we go. Autism, an abnormal assertion with a thought of, is often marked by communication disorders and short attention span and inability to treat other people. Okay. Although, so the inability to treat others as people. There is no known cause or cure. Many dissertations have been written about possible treatment for the disorder. About possible treatments for the disorder. With some allowing its patient to leave cement. You want to say the word patience there, allowing its patients. Normal life. Statistics suggest that approximately 5 in 1,000 people are affected by autism, making it more common in our population than previously thought. Okay. So not bad. So I think overall you're pronouncing again the syllabic M and syllabic N sounds correctly. Not too many difficulties there. Just be careful with some of those corrections I made with your pronunciation there. All right? Okay, so you're doing now independent speaking practice test number 17. So do you prefer living in the same place or do you like to move around a lot? So you're answering that specific question. And let's hear how you responded to that. I'm inclined to live in the same place since all my friends live around this place and I know all the streets around my house. First of all, all my childhood friends live near my house. Therefore, I wouldn't like to move another place because I would get away from them. For instance, if I move to another place and then I want to go out to spend time, I wouldn't be able to go out with my friends because they are far away. Second, you could probably say because they live too far away there. I know all the streets around my house. And this is an advantage when I have to move another place because I save a lot of time. Because I won't have to spend time trying to figure out where to go because I'm more familiar with the surroundings. For example, in a new place, I have to start knowing new places. And sometimes, when I move to another place, I will... So wait a minute, I have to start what? I save a lot of time. 
For example, in a new place, I have to start knowing new places. I have to start knowing new places or maybe learning new places or getting used to driving to new places. That's probably a little bit better than, than how you frame that. And sometimes, when I move to another place, I would get lost in the way, probably. This is where I prefer living. Can we check your grammar on that last part there? Because I save a lot of time. For example, in a new place, I have to start knowing new places. And sometimes, when I move to another place, I would get lost in the way, probably. This is where I prefer living in the same place. I would get lost in my way or in the way. That was a little bit awkward how you said that last idea there. Okay, now let's take a look at the rubrics here. So maybe every now and then you're having a little bit of what's called unnatural type, either vocabulary or grammar there. So that could cause a little bit of issues there with your language use. Topic development, I think, for the most part, you're organized... Uh, you definitely answered the question there. So delivery, I think overall you're speaking pretty clearly, didn't have any major problems there, so I think this is a pretty good response. I'm going to put you between about 23 to 24 points out of 30, 3.0 to 3.1 out of 4 on this practice test. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Nisha, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. And uh, I apologize for taking so long to get to this one. Uh, this last week I've been really busy uh, grading, so I'm just trying to keep ahead of everything here. Uh, all right, so you did uh, independent speaking task number one. So describe a place you visited as a child. What is your favorite memory while visiting this place? Okay, so let's hear how you answered this question. When I was a child, I visited a coffee farm near my home. Okay. And I really remember this place because of two reasons. For now look, it's not just why you visited the place. If you look at this question, the question is what is your favorite memory while visiting the place? So there's really two parts of this question. First, describe the place first, then explain your favorite memory. So you have to make sure when you're doing the TOEFL speaking, you want to make sure you understand and answer the questions correctly. The reason is that I have so many friends there and we have played a lot there. And the second, um, uh, for example, uh, when uh, I, I was five, uh, I had my neighbors and my best friend with me and we played together a lot there. And the second reason is that that's the place where my childhood uh, uh, memories were, were and I have my uh, school nearby there. And, um, and uh, every day I go there, I see this. Um. Okay, so let's take a look at the rubrics here. So the main thing is topic development. You really did not answer this question in any way. So even when you tried to talk about your favorite memory, you just talked about why you visited the place, but you weren't very specific in the detail that you gave there. So big weaknesses with topic development. So I feel that you're just not quite comfortable yet. But that's why you joined my course, right? You want to get more comfortable answering these kinds of questions. So that's what you want to do. Uh, I'd recommend a lot of vocabulary, a lot of grammar study in my course that will help you to develop, I think, more natural sounding language use. Delivery, you're having a lot of pauses, a lot of hesitations in there, which uh, make it difficult for you. You also need to work on your intonation. But I think you're already working on pronunciation, so keep going through all of those lessons. I would really spend a lot of time practicing pronunciation right now. That's going to help you a lot with your delivery. Your score here, I'm going to put you here at about 1.0 out of 4, 8 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. 
Yeah, hi there, Oscar, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass a tool for IBT. And you're doing integrated practice test number 11. So let's go ahead and listen to your specific response here, see how you answered this question. The speakers are talking about some ideas of how teachers can make learning more enjoyable and fun for their students. First of all, the woman, she said that should be more creativity on the teachers. For example, they can play, they can role plays uh, for more concentra concentration. Uh, the man, he's let me, talking let about... Let me check the beginning of it one more time. The speakers are talking about some ideas of how teachers can make learning more enjoyable. Pretty good grammar there. So they're, they're talking about how to make learning more enjoyable, but not just enjoyable, interactive. And fun for their students. First of all, the woman, she said that... Uh, not the woman, she says, just say, first of all, the woman says... There's no need to repeat that subject unnecessarily. Should be more creativity on the teachers. For example, they can play, they can role plays uh, for more concentra concentration. Uh, the man he's talking about uh, should be excess interactivity between... Let me go back. He's talking about what? For more concentra concentration. Uh, the man he's talking about... Uh, should be excess interactivity between professor, uh, teachers and the students. For example, asking kids to pick up... That's a little awkward how you said that, so I'm going to say that's a language use error. He's talking about should... Sounded like you're saying should, but maybe I'm just not understanding your pronunciation, but if you're saying should, he's talking about whether or not, then you can use that subject in the verb um, there. Similar objects, like pencils and... And or numbers, uh, and that will uh, function for to concentrate more in the in the subject that the subject that they are talking about. Also, should be exist the men say that state that should be exist friendship between the student and the teacher. It's talking about should, so I get the feeling that you have a grammar limitation when you're combining yes no. Uh, questions to the main part of your sentence. So, I want you to write this down. Put this in your notes here. If I said, does the man know, and then, should the students turn in the paper next week? Now, the question is, how do you combine those sentences together? So, does the man know, should the students turn in the writing assignment next week? You have to say, does the man know whether or not the students should turn in the writing assignment next week, right? Or does a does a man know if the student should turn in the writing assignment next week? So I think you need to be careful on how you're combining uh, that particular uh, sentence. Uh, all right. So I, I think on this one, you I think you had some some language use problems, as I'm pointing out. Uh, you had a little bit of difficulty with that area. Overall, you, I think you answered the question, so that's good with your topic development. Also, I think you had some delivery issues with this response. So I'm going to put you at about 2.5 out of 4, 19 points out of 30 on this practice test. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Marcelo, and I'm going to listen to your integrated speaking practice test number eight. Okay, so let's see. So you did integrated speaking practice test number eight, so let's hear uh, how you answered this question. The reading passage states a concept of cooperative learning and a listening passage the states uh, uh, an example about send a problem. That you're you're almost there. So the the reading passage defines cooperative learning, and then the listening passage gives an example to illustrate the concept. If you say something like that, that's showing exactly what the relationship is between the two sources here. First of all, cooperative learning. You want to say cooperative. Co
co-op，cooperative learning。Which consists of a problem given by the student or the teacher, and the other students try to solve that problem and share the solution with the others. Furthermore, the listening passage presents an example of sent a problem, which consists of small groups which write down some problem and the solution. After that, the each group takes one card and try to solve that uh, problem. If the solution is the same, they will take other card. Otherwise, they will write down the other possible answer. They're ready. So when you're talking about that lecture, you need to put more voice markers in there. So you know, according to the speaker, if the solutions are the same, then the students will write down blah blah blah. And I, I have a feeling you're getting a little bit too detailed on all that information. Remember, you're trying to summarize the information from the reading and the lecture, not explain word for word exactly what was said. So you can you can certainly condense a lot of that information and. So uh, I think overall on this one, I think maybe with let me look at topic development.、Uh, I think overall you did a fairly good job. I think explaining the main points from the reading passage and the listening passage. So I didn't notice any major、uh, issues there.、Uh, also, language use for the most part, you had pretty good control of your vocabulary and your grammar. You had some minor difficulties with pronunciation, you know, in terms of explaining the ideas. So I'm going to put your score here.、Uh, I'm going to say 2.83 out of four, so 22 points out of 30 on this practice test. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for、uh, Raphael, and I'm going to listen to.、Uh, You did some pronunciation practice, right? So let's go ahead and listen to how you answered this one. So this is a lesson number thirty-two, exercise six. So it says you are paying attention to general word stress patterns, and you're remembering to make the stress syllable louder, clearer, longer, and also higher pitched. So that's what you're trying to do here. So let's listen to how you read these sentences. Lesson thirty-two, exercise six, one. A pamphlet entitled "Dissertation on the Kenyan and the Feudal Law and Town Instructions,"、okay. announced in the Stanak, seventeen sixty-five, marked John Adams as a vigorous patriotic. Pinman, two. Earlier studies of firefighter mor mortality that did not. You want to say mortality there, not mortality. So mortality. Identify brain cancer as a cause of death were done before the widespread introduction of plastics in the 1950s. Yeah, 1950. So so far you're doing okay. You had problems with that one word, mortality. Three. California State University, San Bernardino, or CSUSB, is a university at which one can become a CPA and can complete an MBA degree. Okay. Four. Mercury is the second densest major body in the solar system, indicating that Mercury's dense iron core is relatively larger than Earth's. Probably comprising the majority of the planet. Five. Okay. Up, upright wrestling was conducted. No, it's upright wrestling. They're not upright. So the stress here is on the first, not the second syllable. So upright wrestling. In a jumping pit, pit style arena, a type of round or oval building with an open space with rising seats in the middle. I like your tone. So overall, you, you had you had some minor problems with word stress, but you are, for the most part, stressing the correct syllable, and you're changing your pitch with that stress syllable. So that was,、uh, I think, a very good practice exercise、uh, for you. 
All right, let's see what we have here. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Let me take a look at this one. I'm going to find this one. Okay, got it right here. So you're focusing on the K and the G sound. The only thing you want to be careful about here, you can probably pronounce these fairly correctly, but when the, when the K is at the end of the word, the vowel will, will be shorter, which precedes it. When the G is at the end, the vowel will be shorter when it precedes that, because these are voiceless and voice consonants. Okay, so let's, let me listen to this. Astronomer Michael and Herm will lead a team that's planning to find out what's inside Comet Temple 1 by smashing into it with a 771-pound copper hammer, the bigger they could lost into space. Th this one, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest they could loft into space. You didn't really clearly pronounce that. The king is going to go crazy when he finds out that the corn is has garlic is all gone. Good. Counting all the gases in the universe during the course of one last time. I would make the tone higher there. So counting all the gases in the universe during the course of one's lifetime can take a number as high as a Google. So because lifetime is kind of the end of the thought group, I would have a rising inflection there, and then it falls when you get to the end of the sentence. Take a number as high as a Google. To engage in regulating correct conformity is good, but can also lead to suggestive, creative, and negative aggression. Not bad on the intonation there. I like that. So you're hit and miss on the tone right now, and I'm going to continue to remind you on that because it is complicated. The consequences of aggressive crying gives criminal punishments mentioned in some magazines so severe that they may never work in normal society again. Okay, so if I read that, I would say this. The consequences of aggressive crying give criminals punishments mentioned in some magazines so severe that they may never work in normal society again. Right, that's the tone you want to use on that one.